Hello, welcome to the Lulu Loves Crochet Podcast episode 38, I believe. My name is Emma and this is my podcast mainly about crochet, the projects I've been working on um, and my designs, um, but also about books, TV, other crafts, whatever I fancy talking about really. So I hope you're all well. Um, I will, before I get started, uh, because I always forget to say it, I will put the links to anything I've mentioned in the show notes and they will be linked below. They'll be on my blog. Anyway, how are you all? We are all well. Homeschooling is back for another two weeks only. So, we'll, well, I'm excited about that. I'm not sure about the children. I think they've got used to being at home. So, um, we've had half term, so I had a week off work and we didn't do anything obviously because we couldn't and the weather wasn't very nice either. So um, we mostly just holed up at home um, and did baking and watched lots of movies and I read lots and lots of books. <laughs> so it was lovely actually. I, um, I just felt I really needed to switch off from everything. So we definitely did that. But we're back to it. Um, so I don't have, um, I don't think I've got any finished objects to show you. Um, and that's because I hadn't started, um, well, I think I just started the um, shawl pattern uh, when I last podcast. Um, and I was working on another bobble project. So I, I brought that up to show you and I brought the shawl up to show you and another project that I'm working on. So we'll have a look at those, but I don't have any finished items. I really didn't crochet a lot at all in that week off with the children. Um, I just, I wasn't feeling it and my, um, my knuckles have been a bit sore recently. So um, yeah, I just, I didn't feel like it for some reason, so I had a week off, and I, uh, which is unusual for me because I normally, I normally have something on the go, even when I have nothing on the go. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But um, I have really been enjoying reading my books, so I just took the time out to rest, and um, yes, I've definitely, I've definitely felt better for it. So we'll get started, and I'll show you what I've been doing. Oh. I'm trying really hard not to start any um, new projects. I really want to finish the ones I've got on the go. So I'll um, I'll show you the shawl first, the um, Awana shawl. Um, and I'd only just started it last time I podcast, I think. I really enjoyed working on this pattern. Really, really enjoyed it. It's really soothing. And I've got the hang of the um, repetitions now, but that's what I've got so far. Isn't that lovely? Um, I'm not using the suggested yarn. I'm using Drops, um, I think it was Nord. I think that was it, I'll link it all. Um, it, it's definitely gonna need blocking. Um, it's coming up a little bit wonky. But I think once that's been blocked out, that's still going to look just as beautiful as it would have with the cotton. I'll try and get in a bit closer for you. There we go. Look at those lovely bobbles. So, yeah, I'm just loving that. I'm not sure how much... Um, more I've got left to do. I'll pop another picture if I've got one um, of the finished shawl or what it's supposed to look like. But I love this and I think this will be so nice because of that, um, you know, that yarn. That's going to be really nice to wear as a scarf as well as, um, you know, as well as a shawl when it's finished. So I'm just doing that a uh, few rows on that of an evening. Um, and I'm alternating that, this pattern, with working on my mini skein blanket, which I'll show you next. Um, yes, so the mini skein blanket is coming along. Um, it's a slow process, <laughs> um, but I've still got, I've had to, rearrange everything. So um, I've got all my squares in there. I've still got quite a lot. Um, 
loads of lovely ones in there. Um, yes, so that's full of um, squares and there's even some I haven't rolled up yet. I had a bit of a, well, we had a bit of an incident with the project bag. I, I don't know if you remember, it was in my lovely green Kath Kidston um, drawstring bag last time. Um, I had all the unwound balls of wool in there and I was keeping the squares all on a pin. Well, there's too many squares for the pin now, so they've come off, but um, I had it just leaning against the coffee table and um, Ted had one of his 25 minutes in the living room the other evening and he peed on the bag, <laughs> if you can believe that. I was so offended. Um, luckily, I think he was just overexcited and, and was scenting and I managed to sort of <laughs> whip it away so um none of the um the yarn was affected but um yeah I had to give the the, the bag a, a good wash but he um he was sent to bed and he was very very apologetic I could just see in his face he was mortified at what he'd done um he spent the rest of the evening in his bed so yes I haven't um I haven't managed to so what I've done <laughs> There was a point. So my husband bought me a lovely little tea hamper for Valentine's Day. I've been working my way through some lovely posh teas. So I've just popped all the um, minis that I've left into this tiny little basket, which is just the cutest thing. So I'm really, really enjoying that um, and having that, sort of carrying it around. So until my bag is back in action, they can live in there. Um, right, what was I saying? I don't know, I was just going to show you. So this is what I've got so far. It is definitely coming on inside, but I'm working it up corner to corner because I'm doing the joins, um, you know, I'm working the white up and joining it to all four squares around it. So, um, there you can see. It's lovely. It just brings me so much happiness. Um, I can't wait to see it finished, but I'm also really, really enjoying the process of it. Um, and I've got some lovely, you know, skeins that I've been sent in there. And um, you know, I've got some of the Christmas ones, some of the Easter ones from last year. Um, so I'm really, really happy with that. I don't know how big I'm going to let it get. Um, I'd say it's, what are we at? Maybe a metre and a half. I don't know whether just to go for double bed size. I just don't think I've got the stamina to, to keep it going for I'll see how I get on, I think. Um, the other thing is I don't want to, I don't want it to be too oddly mixed. So I'm trying really hard to, um, I think I'm getting about three or four squares out of each mini. And so what I do, if I place one here, I'm putting one aside for the other half. So although I'm not planning ahead, I really am just picking colors out. I'm making sure that they're, they can be spread out um, evenly over the blanket so that I don't get you know all of one set of mini skeins here and then all of another a bit further down so I'm really just trying to keep it sort of like a hodgepodge of of colours and um, yeah I'm really really enjoying it so I'm just going to keep going I think I, I don't think um we'll see I just don't think I'll have it in me to do a double but you never know maybe I'll just keep it going for the rest of the year um we'll see we'll see on that one but so that's coming along nicely so I thought I'd share that with you because I can't I don't think I've shown that since Christmas um on the podcast so I thought I'd update you on that and that and the shawl really are the only projects that I have been working on I think because I've been a bit in holiday mode um I haven't, I hadn't started anything new um, and I hadn't really wanted to do the um, the things that I've got to do. So um, they've been really, really soothing. 
Um, and then the only other um, project I brought up to show you was the hobble pattern that I had started on the last one. Um, and actually I've started again in um, some different yarn, but I thought I'd just show you the swatch really that I was making. Um, there we go. So, oh. So it's another diamondy bobble pattern. I really, really like it. Um, and I'm making that into a top. I'll talk you more through it um, next time, I think, when I've got, because I'm still working out a few little design elements. Um, so I will share more of that, but I really, really am enjoying working those bubbles and uh, making another garment, actually. So, um, yeah, I've, that's the uh, pattern I've been working on. Um, and I also have another tutorial actually that um, will be going up soon. So, but I'll talk. I'll talk more about that next time. I think. So yes, that's all. That's the only crochet items I've got to show you. So I'm sorry um, if this podcast is a bit short. Um, but I thought I would pop in and say hello because otherwise, um, what happens? I'll leave it for a month and then the podcast will be too long. <laughs> so. Uh, but that's really all I've been doing. A um, couple of other things I wanted to say, uh, one of which is that the Bloom Throw from the Romantic Crochet book, it's here, if you remember it. Oh, there she is. She's really heavy. She's um, she's done in cotton hour in this one, so she is really, I can't wait for the summer to take her out on picnics and things. Anyway, it, the pattern, sorry, has been featured in this month's Molly Makes magazine. Um, and actually, I, I I wasn't even aware. <laughs> I think it must have been something that the publishers sorted out. But I had an email from Molly Makes to say, oh, congratulations on being featured and we're going to send you a copy of the magazine. So if you wanted to try um, one of the patterns from Romantic Crochet, the I know that the Hot Water Bottle Cozy was featured in, in Inside Crochet magazine. Well, um, you can have a look at the Bloom Fro now in Molly Makes magazine. So I'm really excited about that. This is, um, I love Molly Makes and I think it's, I think it's the second or third time now I've had a pattern in Molly Makes and I, I'm always so proud because um, I just, I just love the, the magazine really. I have done since they, they started it. I mean, look at that. This issue must be a kind of cottage core inspired and I love cottage core. If you, um, <laughs> if you play Animal Crossing, as I do occasionally. Um, cottage core is a big thing. If you type in Animal Cross Crossing and Cottage Core onto YouTube, the designs, the island designs are so beautiful. I want to live in every single one of them. So, um, and I've just noticed that there's a lovely knitted, I might, I wonder if I could do that actually, a lovely knitted cottage core. What pad there, look which I love. I, I just, I do like, I know it's an aesthetic and we're not supposed to um, buy into that, but I do. I, I just, I, I think I love the romance and the sort of the nature aspects of cottage core. Um, but uh, there's some lovely, there's a, um, as we're going here, I haven't even looked at this actually. Um, the, the, the nice thing about Molly Makes is they do so many different crafts origami oh that's lovely a little wall hanging crochet wall hanger that's really nice as well look at that that's lovely so they normally have one or two crochet projects in a molly makes magazine um and there's the um the pin throw so Pattern for that is in there if you want to have a go. Um, there's some lovely, some lovely projects in there. What's that? Colour block fleece. Oh, I like that. That's gorgeous. I love the wallpaper with the um, contrasting fabric. Oh, that's a cottage core inspiration. DIY. No 
feel like this is quite um, popular with younger people at the moment, cottage core. Uh, these absolutely these on the front cover. Oh, they're gorgeous. I feel like if I made something out of felt like that, it wouldn't look like that. <laughs> I don't know how they get them to look so neat. Maybe I'll have a go. I mean, it does look really simple because they do the step by step. So I won't show you because I'm spoiling it. But, so, yes, that is on sale now. That's the latest issue of Molly Makes. So, I thought I would mention that because that came through my door this morning. So, I was really, um, I'm so pleased. Um, and then the other, I wanted to give a little shout out to um, Clarissa over at um, Crochet Cakes podcast. I'm sure you will watch her. She's been podcasting for a long time. Um, she made one of the, um, the teapot cozies in the most gorgeous colours, like mustardy, kind of greeny, rustic colours. Really lovely. If I can find a picture, I'll put it here. She had it up on her Instagram. Um, and she has a podcast as well. I mean, she crochets so much. I don't know, I honestly don't know how she gets time to do it all, but she's always working on um, garments and designing. So I will leave her channel below. Um, but I just thought I'd mention it because it made me want to make another teapot cozy, if that's possible. So um, yeah, I thought I would mention her. And the last thing I think I'll show you before I talk about some books are the hearts. So I think, I'm pretty certain it was in the last podcast, um, I showed you some bits I bought from Hobbycraft for Easter and Valentine's Day, some Valentine's Day crafts. Um, and I did put, I think I filmed Lulu and I working on our hearts in the vlog. So I have been trying to film a few more vlogs for you. And um, I think it was in the Valentine's one that I filmed her and I painting our hearts. So I thought I would show you, but I didn't get to show you the finished items. So I thought I would um, show you what they look like finished, but I'm just going to pause the camera, it's flashing at me and then I'll restart. So these are the hearts, the li just little wooden hearts that we bought from um, Hobby Craft, I've just said that. So this is Lulu's. I've still got them attached to just some string that I used just so that we could hold them up and paint them, but I'm gonna replace this with some nice lace or um, I'll, I'll find something because this is not very attractive. But this is Lulu's, <laughs> isn't it amazing? I mean, if I do say so myself, she has done a sort of moon and look she's drawn all these little features in can you see that isn't that lovely um and then she's got glitter running through it as well so i feel like this is a bit cottage corey mine on the other hand <laughs> was completely brash um and i went for more of a sort of um more of a bohemian vibe for mine <laughs> okay so there's mine and um, I was trying to do some flowers around the edge, but I feel like they look more like leopard prints. Um, and then we've glossed over them with that spray, spray gloss. Um, and they, they turned out so well. So she's just got her name on the back with the, um, with the year, so we can keep that. So um, these have just been hanging down in the kitchen, actually, where, our, um, where we were painting them but I'm going to refread them and I'll, I'll find somewhere to hang them but I just think that you know that's something that I can keep now and it's something that we did together um so for me that's that's just priceless really but um you know just a lovely inexpensive craft using things that apart from the hearts that we already had so I thought I would just share those quickly and um, that is it for crafty bits. I've done no shopping, I've bought no yarn, I have not bought any books or patterns. I've been very good, I think. So I'll just talk to you about a couple of books. Um, I read a lot, like I said, I think I finished about four or five books recently and um, they were all, they're all fairly good but I've what I've done is I've just picked the two that I think I'd probably recommend to the most people. Um, so the first one is The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. Um, and this is a copy that I grabbed from the library. It's um, her new book. She also wrote um, 
think it was the chalk man so it's um sort of thriller mystery I i've read some reviews on this one that say it verges on horror or science fiction i don't necessarily agree with that it's basically the story of a vicar and her teenage daughter that moved to a small village to take over the church there and when they get there, there are lots of these burning um, wood dolls, called, they're called burning girls, and they are to mark respect for, um, I think, eight, eight young people, including two young girls, that were burned at the stake for being martyrs. Um, and the village is very much, has very much been built on this principle, and people leave little um, dolls, wooden dolls. Um, so there's that, that kind of... Um, I suppose, um, superstition and tradition that they walked into. But on top of that, two teenage girls went missing, um, I think 30 years prior, and just seemed to disappear, um, along with the parish priest and one of the girls' families. Uh, so it's, you know, this sort of small village has got sort of a mystery, this sort of history, superstition history, and she takes over the parish church just as the vicar has apparently um, killed himself. So there's a lot, they walk into a lot. I think where it verges on this, the sort of supernatural is there's an element of ghosts, you know, and they, her and her daughter start seeing things. They start seeing these apparitions of burning girls and the story being whenever you see a burning girl, you're in danger. So that's that's really the basis of the story, but um, you know they're more they they don't even really try to. It's not like a mystery that they're trying to uncover. It just sort of unfurls around them. Um, I really liked it. I I really enjoyed it. It reminds me of another book, and I can't I can't for the life of me think what it was. But um, if you liked the Chalk Man and you like um, C J Tudor's writing, I think you will love this one. Um, and then the second book that I will recommend this month is um, The Push. This one's by Ashley Audrain. If you watched the 12 books that I want to read in 2021, this was one of them. It's just very good. But I do feel like it should come with maybe some trigger warnings <laughs> because it is about a young woman who had... Um, has no contact with her mum. They had a very um, difficult relationship and it flicks back and forwards in time between her relationship with her mum and then her mum's relationship with her mum. And all of these relationships have been um, pretty fraught. I mean, not just in that they would argue, in, in that they were very, very flawed. Um, there was a lot of neglect, um, and and a lot of abuse really so you know bear that in mind when you're reading it and I also I would not recommend this book if you're pregnant or have just had a baby but it does deal with um you know this young woman she has a she has a baby and a very much wanted baby with her husband and she just doesn't seem to bond with it um and I think it's really good because it does give you um you know sort of um a a sense of postpartum depression, um, you know, and people who don't necessarily bond with their children straight away. That's, you know, that's something that's not often talked about. It's, but within that, you start to feel, is she sort of, you, you're, you can't tell if it's in her head or if there's something actually wrong with her daughter because around her daughter's upbringing, besides the fact that she had a very difficult time mothering her, um, and she always felt like the baby preferred the father and blah, 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 blah. Besides all of that, as the child grows older, there are certain things, accidents that happen around the child that lead to people's death. And so, you know, she's always trying to push this out of her mind. It's my fault. It's, she's just a child. She's just a child. And it, of course, it, what it does is it um, has a terrible effect on her marriage with her husband because obviously he he doesn't agree. He can't. He doesn't see that. Um, and you do start to wonder: Is she just? Is she so sort of far gone in her sort of a, a sort of psychosis 
that she can't, you know, she just can't get through it? Or, you know, are the things that she thinks she's seeing actually happening? Anyway, it's, it's, it's just really, really tragic. But it also, it's just really interesting to read about that side of motherhood, you know, of someone who really struggles to bond with her baby and she thinks it's hers and she thinks it's her fault um, and she thinks it's her problem and then she has another baby and she doesn't feel that way at all. So it's really, it's really interesting. And in a way, um, I was almost a bit disappointed by the ending and that they do reveal the, the truth. I think it might just have been better to have left it ambiguous because I think it gives more of a sense of that state of mind. But I would recommend that. I definitely would recommend that. I would not recommend that if you're just about to give birth, if you're newly pregnant, <laughs> um, you know, but um, because there are some sensitive issues in there. Um, but I, I just... I think that's amazing. I gave it five stars. I actually read it in 24 hours. I just couldn't put it down. So there's that. So be warned if you read it. <laughs> um, and I think that's everything. As far as TV goes, Robert and I are watching Downton Abbey from season one again. We've just been um, re-watching Downton Abbey because I actually, I know that I'm missing a lot of episodes because after my died, I'm sorry if you've never watched it. Oh, now I feel like I, I should do a spoiler alert. Maybe I'll try and block that out. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't watch it. I just, I felt like one of my favourite characters was gone and I felt really sad. So I, I kind of just dipped in and out. So we've never watched it all the way through. And I really wanted to watch the film, but I thought I can't watch the film until I've watched all the series. So we've been watching a couple of episodes of that night and it's just lovely. It's just very relaxing TV. Um, what else did I watch? Oh, I started watching Outlander and I was really enjoying it, but it, um, I finished season one. I found it just, it was quite violent. Um, and I don't mind a bit of violence, but it was quite, quite violent. Uh, and it sort of put me off watching season two really, because some of the imagery has really stayed with me this past week. So I might just have a little break. I mean, I love, I love the story. But I think, I was talking to a friend about it at work, and I think I had this idea that it would all be sort of Highland frolicking, and <laughs> it just it wasn't like that at all. So um, I I did really enjoy it, and I did really want to see how it ended. However, by the end of the season, I, I think I was a bit like, oh, oh, I need to have something light-hearted now. So I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully I'll... Um, I'll, I'll have a little break. Tell me if you've watched Outlander, do, does it stay as violent as that? Is it? I mean, it's. I'm not talking about the fighting either. It's the psychology. It's the psychology behind the violence is quite malicious. Um, anyway, let me know. Does it stay like that? Because um, I might have to brace myself. <laughs> Um, but it is beautiful. I mean, I, I can see why so many people love it. It was very beautiful to watch. Well, most of it. And that is everything, I think, that I have to talk about. So let me know what you've been watching, if you've been watching anything good, because I do feel at a bit of a loss. Um, we, we did watch a film, actually, on Amazon Prime. Um, I think it... What was it called? I think it was called I Care A Lot and it had, is that Rosamund Pike from um, Gone Girl? She plays a very similar character. Look that one up if you fancy a film um, to watch because that, that was quite good. Um, but other than that, no, I've not, I, I don't really know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'm a bit lost. I have to brave um, season two of Outlander. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're all well um, and staying safe and um, hopefully things will be getting back to normal soon. So there's something to look forward to. Um, and the sun's started to shine a bit now, hasn't it? So um, I'm hoping we can all get out in the garden again soon. So that would be lovely. Um, anyway, I will be back in another couple of weeks um, with another podcast. And I will keep trying to film some vlog footage for you. But like I said, not, not much goes on. I'm sure you're all in the same boat, really. But um, when I can, I will. Um, and I will see you soon. Bye.